Hi everyone, I'm Professor Sung Myung from the Department of Cancer Biomedical Science of the National Cancer Center, Graduate School of Cancer Science and Policy. Uh, this is the last lecture for the Medical Terminology 2 of the Clinical Oncology. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about cardiovascular system. First, key terms. Diaphoresis means profuse sweating. Incompetent means inability to adequately perform a given function or action. Leaflet is a, a thin, flattened structure. This is the term used to describe the leaf-shaped structures that compose a heart valve. The lumen is a tubular space or channel with any organ or structure of the body. Usually, this is a space within an artery, vein, intestine, or tube. Malaise is a symptom of vague, uneasy feeling of the body weakness, distress, or discomfort, commonly making the onset of and persisting throughout a disease. Occlusion is a blockage in a canal, vessel, or passage of the body. Patent means an opening and unblocked, such as a patent artery. This is an adjective form. And prophylaxis means preventive measure or technique commonly involving the use of a biologic, chemical, or mechanical agent to destroy or prevent the entry of infectious organisms. Viscosity is the state of being sticky or gummy. Now I'm going to talk about the anatomy and physiology of the cardiovascular system. The cardiovascular system is composed of the heart and blood vessels. As you can see here, the main parts are the heart and blood vessels. The heart is a hollow muscular organ lying in the mediastinum, which is the center of the thoracic cavity between the lungs. And blood vessels, uh, the pumping action of the heart propels blood containing oxygen, nutrients, and other vital products to body cells through a vast network of blood vessels called arteries. And thus there are veins. Blood returns to the heart through blood vessels called veins to begin the cycle again. Blood picks up waste products from the body cells to deliver them to the organs of excretion. The trillions of body cells rely on the cardiovascular system for their survival. Here, this figure shows vascular structures. The red one are arteries and the blue ones are veins and purple ones are capillary vessels. There are three major types of vessels, the artery, the capillary, and the vein. These carry blood throughout the body. Each type of vessel differs in structure depending on its function. First, Arteries carry blood from the heart to trillions of body cells that make up an organism. The walls of the large arteries have three layers to provide the necessary strength and flexibility. So, tunica externa, tunica media, and tunica intima. Tunica externa is a tough outer coat of connective tissue that provides strength. And tunica media is a layer of smooth muscular tissue. Depending on the needs of the body, it can cause vasoconstriction, which means a reduction of the lumen diameter caused by smooth muscle contraction, or vasodilation, which means widening of the lumen caused by a smooth muscle relaxation. Lastly, the tunica intima is a thin inner lining composed of endothelial cells that provides a smooth surface so 
blood can flow easily through its lumen. Here, uh, as for the artery, you can see the tunica external in the outer layer, and inside there is a tunica media and also tunica intima. And the, mm, the um, most inner layer is the endothelium of the artery, and also there is a cavity lumen. And these uh, words are very similar to the arteries, to those of the arteries in veins. As you can see here, tunica externa, tunica media, tunica intima, and there is another uh, structure of the vein, which is a valve. And uh, arterial, you can see the smooth muscle and the precapillary sphincter. And also, you can see the capillary vessels. The surge of blood felt in the arteries when blood is pumped from the heart. Because of the pressure against the arterial walls associated with the pumping action of the heart, a cut or severed artery may lead to profuse bleeding. Uh, okay, the first is the surge of blood. And the arteries contain a high concentration of oxygen, except for the found in the pulmonary artery. The artery appears bright red and it is said to be oxygenated. Oxygenated blood travels to small arteries called arterioles and finally to the smallest vessels, the capillaries. The purple ones are capillaries. And here, from the heart, the largest artery is the aorta and then arteries. And in the terminal part of the artery, there are arterioles. And then the, there are capillary vessels. And here, the oxygen and CO2 are, uh, here, the uh, waste materials and uh, waste materials are, are going into the uh, veins. Actually, the first part of the vein is venules. And then, many venules uh, merge into the vein. And then, the largest vein is the uh, vena cava. And this vena cava uh, enters into the heart, the right atrium. Capillaries. These are microscopic vessels that join the arterial system with the venous system. Nutrients and oxygen in the blood are exchanged for waste products formed by surrounding cells. Capillaries are composed of a single layer of endothelial cells. They are very, very thin, and the blood flow through the highly branched capillary system is regulated by the contraction of smooth muscle precapillary sphincters that lead into the capillary bed. Once the exchange of products is complete, blood enters the venous system for its return cycle to the heart. And as for veins, the veins return blood to the heart. Veins are formed from smaller vessels called venules that develop from the union of capillaries. There are several methods to prepare Pale blood to the heart, skeletal muscle contraction, gravity, respiratory activity, and valves. These valves are small structures within veins that prevent the backflow of flow blood. Here in the figure, you can see the valve in uh, of in the vein, and these veins contain a low concentration of oxygen, uh, which is called deoxygenated, with the corresponding high concentration of carbon dioxide. The oxygenated blood takes on a characteristic purple color. 
The heart is contained a sac called the pericardium. There are three distinct tissue layers. First one is endocardium. This is a serous membrane that lines the four chambers of the heart and its valves. And the endocardium is continuous with the endothelium of the arteries and veins. The myocardium is the muscular layer of the heart. Lastly, the epicardium is the outermost layer of the heart. A four-chambered muscular pump supplied with an electrical conduction system whose function is to propel blood throughout the body through a closed vascular system. Here, you can see the left uh, in the upper part of the right of the heart, you can see the right atrium and also left side, there is a left atrium and lower part, there are two ventricles, right ventricle and left ventricle. And here, uh, there, is, uh, there is the heart in the center and the blood vessels from the bodies the main route is the inferior vena cava and the superior vena cava. And the blood enters into the right atrium. And then here, uh, th throughout the tricuspid valve between the right atrium and the right ventricle, and the blood uh, go enters into the right atrium and the left right ventricle. And then the blood enters into the lung via the pulmonary artery. And, and also there are two pulmonary arteries, right pulmonary arteries and left pulmonary, uh, le right pulmonary artery and the left pulmonary artery. In the pulmonary artery, there is a pulmonary valve. And then the blood, after the blood is oxygenated from the lung, the blood go, uh, enters to the heart through the left atrium. And these vessels are called pulmonary veins. There are two pulmonary veins, right and left ones. And then the blood uh, goes down to the left ventricle via mitral valves. So these mitral valves are located between the left atrium and the left ventricle. And then blood goes out uh, through, through the aorta. Okay, now I'm going to talk about the four chambers uh, there are two upper chambers, which is the atria, uh, the right atrium and the left atrium. These collect blood. And also there are two lower chambers, which are the ventricles, the right ventricle and the left ventricle. These ventricles pump blood from the heart. The right side of the heart pumps blood to the lungs, pulmonary circulation, for oxygenation. The left side of the heart pumps oxygenated blood to all body systems, which is called systemic circulation. So please remember these two types of circulation, pulmonary circulation and the systemic circulation. And the oxygenated blood from the body returns to the heart by way of two large veins, these are superior vena cava and uh, inferior vena cava. The superior vena cava collects and carries blood from the upper part of the body. Here, in the figure 8-2, you can see the blue uh, vessels, blue colored vessels. Here, superior, number 5, superior vena cava. So, the superior vena cava collects and carries blood from the upper part of the body. 
On the contrary, the inferior vena cava collects and carries blood from the lower part of the body. And these uh, uh, superior vena cava and inferior vena cava enters into the uh, right atrium of the heart. And from the right atrium, blood passes through the tricuspid valve to the right ventricle. Here, you can see the tricuspid valve, number 7. When the heart contracts, blood leaves the right ventricle by way of the left pulmonary artery and the right pulmonary artery and travels to the lung. And during contraction of the ventricle, the tricuspid valve closes to prevent the backflow of blood to the right atrium. And the pulmonary valve or pulmonary semilunar valve prevents a backflow of blood into the right ventricle. Here, uh, figure V, you can see the pulmonary valve. In the lungs, the pulmonary artery branches into millions of capillaries, each lying close to an alveolus. Here, carbon dioxide in the blood is exchanged for oxygen that has been drawn into the lungs during inhalation. Pulmonary capillaries unite to form four pulmonary veins, two right pulmonary veins and two left pulmonary veins, which are the vessels that carry oxygenated blood back to the heart. This is the body blood in the left atrium. From here, blood passes through the mitral valve or bicuspid valve to the left ventricle. Upon contraction of the ventricles, the oxygenated blood leaves the left ventricle through the largest artery of the body, the aorta. The aorta contains the aortic semilunar valve, which is called the aortic valve, that permits blood to flow in only one direction, from the left ventricle to the aorta. Oxygen presented in the blood passing through the chambers of the heart cannot be used by the myocardium as a source of oxygen and nutrients. Instead, there are coronary arteries. These coronary arteries provide the heart with its own blood supply. Coronary arteries lie over the top of the heart much as a crown fits over a head, hence the name coronary. Coron coronary means pertaining to a crown. Here, like this, these vessels, right coronary artery, 16, and 17, left coronary artery, and left, left anterior descending artery, and left circumflex artery. These coronary arteries uh, look like a crown. So uh, the name is coronary artery. The artery vascular rising the right side of the heart is the right coronary artery. The artery vascular rising the left side of the heart is the left coronary artery. The left coronary artery divides into the left anterior descending artery and the circumflex artery. So there are actually three coronary arteries in the coronary arteries. If blood flow in the coronary arteries is diminished, myocardial damage may result. When severe damage occurs, part of the heart muscle may die. Now I'm going to talk about the conductive system. Uh, there is a conduct, uh, the heart has a conductive tissue. Uh, which is a specialized cardiac tissue that has the sole function of initiating and spreading contraction impulses. The connective tissue consists of four masses of highly specialized cells. First one is sinoatrial node, SA node. Second, atrial ventricular node, AV node. Third, the bundle of his or AV bundle, atrial ventricular bundle, and, the, and lastly, there are Purkinje fibers. So remember the sinoatrial node, atrial ventricular node, bundle of his, and Purkinje fibers, SA node, AV node, 
bundle of his and perkinifiers. Here, in the figure, that this shows the conduction system of the heart. Uh, in the uh, right atrium area, you can see the SA node, sinoatrial node. Uh, the impulse starts in here, and then inside, and then across the right atrium. The second part is the AV node, atrial ventricular node, and you can see the bundle of his, which is also called the AV bundle. And then the purple ones show the right bundle branches. Uh, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Actually, these ones, Perkins fibers. So SA node, AV node, bundle of his, and Perkins fibers. First, 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 the SA node is located in the upper portion of the right atrium. As you can see here, uh, the SA node possesses its own intrinsic rhythm. Without being stimulated by external nerves, it has the ability to initiate and propagate each heartbeat, thereby setting the basic pace for the cardiac rate. The SA node is commonly known as the pacemaker of the heart. And each electrical impulse is discharged by the SA node is transmitted to the AV node, causing the atria to contract. The AV node is located at the base of the right atrium. And the bundle of his is a tract of conduction composed of a right and left branch, relays the impulse to the Perkins fibers. And lastly, Perkins fibers transmit the impulse to both the right and left ventricles, causing them to contract. Blood is now forced from the heart through the pulmonary artery and aorta. And this is the sequence of the four structures responsible for conduction of a contraction impulse. Please remember this sequence. SA node, AV node, bundle of his, and Perkins fibers. The impulse transmission through the conduction system generates weak electrical currents that can be detected on the surface of the body. These electrical impulses can be recorded on an instrument called an electrocardiograph. The needle deflection of the electrocardiograph produces waves or peaks designated by the letters P, Q, R, S, and T each of which is associated with a specific electrical event. Here, as you can see here, P wave, QRS complex, and T wave. So the P wave is the depolarization of the aorta, which means the contraction of the atria. So if the atria contracts, contract, then you can see the P wave. And then, now, the second procedure is the contraction of the ventricles, uh, which is uh, the depolarization of the ventricles, which is called the QRX complex. Here, Q, R, S. And lastly, the T wave appears a short time later. The T wave is the repolarization of the ventricles, which means recovery. So P wave is the contraction of the atria. QRS complex is the contraction of the ventricles. And lastly, T wave is the contraction of the ventricles. Now I'm going to talk about blood pressure. The blood pressure measures the force exerted by blood against the arterial walls during two phases of a heartbeat. The first phase is the contraction phase, which is also called the systole. When this is when the blood is forced out of the heart. And the second phase is the relaxation phase, called the diastole, when the ventricles are filling with blood. The blood pressure is recorded as two figures, 
separated by a diagonal line. The systolic pressure is given first, followed by the diastolic pressure. For example, the blood pressure is recorded as 120 slash 80 millimeter mercury, uh, which is the normal blood pressure. Uh, hypertension is a condition that uh, a consistently elevated blood pressure. This is called hypertension. And on the contrary, uh, the decreased blood pressure is hypertension. But in general, the hypertension is the common um, disease entity. But uh, in the people, uh, we, we are we are usually using uh, dealing with the hypertension, which is a very very uh, important uh, condition and disease uh, because hypertension causes uh, atherosclerosis and then finally it leads to the cardiovascular disease such as coronary artery disease and uh, uh, stroke, cerebral vascular disease. But hypertension, this is not considered as the general disease, but uh, this condition is a temporary uh, phenomenon for in the patients, uh, hospitalized patients. Anyway, uh, there are several factors influencing blood pressure. Resistance of blood flow in blood vessels, pumping action of the heart, viscosity or thickness, of blood, elasticity of arteries, quantity of blood in the vascular system. Now I'm, I'm going to talk about medical word elements. Aneurysm, uh, this is a widening or widened blood vessel. Angio or vascular, either uh, means vessel, usually blood or lymph. So angioplasty means surgical repair of blood uh, vessels. Aort means aort. Aortostenosis. In here, stenosis means narrowing. So, aortostenosis is the narrowing of the aorta. Arterio means artery. Arteriole means small artery, so arterial. Atrium means atrium. Atrium megaly means enlargement of the atrium. Megaly means usually enlargement. Arthur means fatty plaque. So atheroma is abnormal condition of fatty plaque. Cardio means heart. Cardiomegaly is the enlargement of the heart. Electro means uh, electricity. So electrocardiogram means graphic recording of the electrical impulses of the heart. Cardi means heart. Gram means record or recording. Embol means plug. So embolectomy means removal of an embolus throughout a surgical procedure or treatment with enzymes. Hemanzi means blood vessel. Hemangioma means the tumor of the uh, Related blood vessels. Myo means muscle. So myocardial is pertaining to heart muscle. Flab, vein means vein. Sclero means hardening or sclera. And arteriosclerosis means thickening, hardening, and loss of elasticity of arterial walls. Sept means septum. Spigma means purse. Spigmoid means resembling a purse. Steno means narrowing or stricture. Thrombo means blood clot. Ventricular means ventricle. Gram means record writing. Graph. Graph means an instrument for recording. Graphy means the process of recording. Spixia means purse. Stenosis narrowing. Uh, for the prefixes, bradi means slow, 
So bradycardia means abnormally slow heart rate. Endo is in. So endovascular means relating to the inside of a vessel. Extra means outside. Extravascular means relating to outside of a vessel. Peri means around. Tachy means rapid. Tachycardia, abnormal rapid heart rate. Trans means across. Transeptal means across the septum. Now I'm going to talk about pathologies. Uh, many cardiac disorders, especially coronary artery disease and valvular disorders are associated with uh, genetic predisposition. A complete history as well as physical examination essential is essential in the diagnosis of cardiovascular disease. The common symptoms of the cardiovascular system are pain, palpitations, dyspnea, and syncope. The cardiology is the medical specialty concerned with disorders of the cardiovascular system. A cardiologist is the physician who treats these disorders. First, the arteriosclerosis is a hardening of arterial walls that causes them to become thickened and brittle. Uh, arteriosclerosis common results from an accumulation of a plaque-like substance composed of cholesterol, lipids, and cellular debris, which is called atheroma. Atheroma builds up on the innermost lining, tunica intima of the arterial walls. Over time, the plaque, plaque hardens, which is called atherosclerosis, causing a loss of vascular elasticity. The vascular channel lumen narrows as the plaque enlarges. Eventually, it becomes difficult for blood to pass through the occluded areas and tissue distal to the occlusion becomes ischemic. Commonly, blood hemorrhages into the plaque and forms a clot, which is called a thrombus, that may dislodge. When a thrombus travels through the vascular system, it is called an embolus. So, please remember the difference between thrombus and embolus. Emboli that travel in venous circulation may cause death. Emboli that travel in arterial circulation frequently lodge in a capillary bed and cause a localized infarct. Plaque sometimes weakens the vessel wall to such an extent that it forms a bulge, which is called aneurysm that may rupture. And as for the treatment of arteriosclerosis, there are several options. The first one is uh, endarterectomy. Uh, especially in the carotid or femoral arteries, the innermost layer of the artery is surgically removed. This is called endarterectomy. And also, there is angioplasty. This is less invasive method, method, using a catheter with a balloon at its tip and inserting it into the affected area. The balloon is inflated to stretch the narrowed artery. After the procedure, the balloon is deflated and removed. A hollow, thin mesh tube, which is a stent, is usually placed on the balloon and positioned against the arterial wall. Artery wall. It remains in place after the balloon catheter is removed and acts as a scaffolding to hold the artery open. This figure shows aneurysms, the types of aneurysms. First one is secular and fusiform or dissecting. Now I'm going to talk about coronary artery disease. And this is a very important one. Coronary artery disease, CAD, is any disease that interferes with the ability of coronary arteries to deliver sufficient blood to the myocardium. The main cause of this coronary artery disease is arteriosclerosis. About 20% of the total cardiac output is needed to meet the oxygen requirements of the heart muscle. When coronary arteries are unable to deliver sufficient 
oxygen, localized areas of the heart experience oxygen deprivation, which is called ischemia, and with total lack of oxygen, the affected area of the heart muscle dies, which condition is called myocardial infarction, MI. There are clinical signs and symptoms of an MI, myocardial infarction. The important one is intense chest pain, which is also called angina, and diaphoresis, sweating, palis, pallor, and dyspnea. And also, there is an arrhythmic heartbeat with tachycardia or bradycardia. As the heart muscle undergoes necrotic changes, several highly specific cardiac enzymes, including troponin T, troponin I, and creatinine kinase, are released. As for the treatment of coronary artery disease, we can use several medications and also conduct surgical repair of the vessel, which is called angioplasty. Uh, there are two types. First, PTCA, percutaneous transluminal coronary angioplasty. Uh, with this procedure, a deflated balloon is passed through a small incision in the skin and into the diseased blood vessel. When it is inflated, the balloon presses the, the occluding material against the lumen walls to increase their diameter. Coronary artery bypass graft, cabbage, CABG, uh, this is a more invasive procedure, which involves rerouting blood around the occluded area. Uh, usually, we use a small graft of a vein to bypass the obstruction. One end of the graft vessel is sutured to the aorta, and the other end is sutured to the coronary artery below the blocked area. This re-establishes blood flow to the heart muscle. Here, this figure shows balloon angioplasty. Figure A, an inflated balloon catheter is inserted into artery. You can see the guide wire and you can see See the lesion of the plaque. Figure B, balloon catheter is inflated, opening the blockage. Here, like this, you can see the inflated balloon. Then the plaque, uh, the lumen is widened. And in the figure C, uh, balloon catheter is deflated and then removed. And figure show, figure D shows that uh, after the procedure, the lumen is unblocked, like this. And this shows the coronary artery bypass graft. You can see here, as you can see here, from the aorta, uh, the uh, new vessel, new vessel, the bypass graft uh, is attached to the aorta and uh, to the side of the left anterior descending artery. And now I'm going to talk about varicose veins. These are enlarged, twisted, superficial veins. Varicose veins develop when the valves of the veins do not function properly, which state is called incompetent, and they fail to prevent the backflow of blood in the vein. So blood accumulates and the vein appears engorged and distended. Excess fluid eventually seeps from the vein, causing swelling in surrounding tissues, which is called edema. Varicose veins may develop in almost any part of the body, but occur most commonly in the lower legs, involving the greater and lesser saphenous veins. These are not typically painful, but may be unsightly in appearance. If open lesions or pain is present, treatment includes laser ablation, microflavectomies, ligation, stripping, and sclerotherapy. The treatment of mild cases of varicose veins, uh, we can use uh, elastic stockings and 
uh, rest periods during in which the legs are elevated. In oncology, actually the cancer or neoplasm um, are, uh, is layer, rare, rare. But uh, there is a myxoma, which is uh, benign, the most common primary tumor of the tumor. The myxoma must arise in the left atrium, usually identified and located by two-dimensional echocardiography. Uh, myxoma should be excised surgically. Most malignant tumors of the heart uh, uh, is the result of a malignancy originating in another area of the body that has spread to the heart. So the uh, original tumor is the primary tumor and they can spread to the heart, which is called metastasized. And now I'm going to talk about diagnostic, symptomatic, and related terms. Aneurysm is a localized abnormal dilation of a vessel, uh, usually an artery. Arrest is a condition of being stopped. So cardiac arrest is a loss of effective cardiac function, which results in cessation of circulation. Arrhythmia is an inability of the heart to maintain a steady rhythm possibly including a rapid or slow beat or skipping a beat. Blue is a soft blowing sound heard on auscultation, possibly due to vibrations associated with the movement of blood vascular action or both, which is also called a murmur. Cardiomyopathy is any disease of heart muscle that diminishes cardiac function. Catheter is thin, flexible, hollow plastic tube that is small, enough to be threaded through a vein, artery, or tubular structure. Coarctation is narrowing of a vessel, especially the aorta. Heart failure is a failure of the heart to supply an adequate amount of blood to tissues and organs. Embolus is a mass of undeserved matter circulating in blood or lymphatic channels. Fibrillation quivering or spontaneous muscle contractions, especially of the heart, causing ineffectual contractions. Uh, hemostasis, the arrest of bleeding or circulation. Hyperlipidemia is excessive amount of lipids in the blood. Hypertension, hypertensive heart disease, implantable cardioverter defibrillator, ICD. This is an implantable battery-powered device then monitors and, if necessary, corrects an irregular heart rhythm by sending impulses to the heart. Infarct is the area of tissue that undergoes necrosis following cessation of blood supply. Ischemia is local and temporary deficiency of blood supply due to circulatory obstruction. Mitral valve prolapse uh, is common and occasionally serious condition in which the leaflets of the mitral valve prolapse into the left atrium during systole causing a characteristic murmur heard on auscultation. Radioisotope is a chemical radioactive substance used as a tracer to follow a substance through the body or a structure. Palpitation is sensation that the heart is not beating normally, possibly including thumping, fluttering, skip, beats or a pounding feeling in the chest. Patent ductus arteriosus. This is a failure of the ductus arteriosus to close after birth. Congenital disease. Perfusion is a circulation of blood through tissues. Tetralogy of follow. This is also a congenital anomaly consisting of four elements. I'll go skip. Stent is a slender thread-like device used to hold open vessels, tubes, or an obstructed artery. Usually, stand, the stents are used for the treatment of the uh, coronary artery disease. Thrombus is blood clot that obstructs a vessel. And diagnostic and therapeutic procedures. Cardiac catheterization. Cardiac means heart. 
So this is a passage of a cathedral into the heart through a vein or artery to provide the comprehensive evaluation of the heart. Electrocardiogram, ECG or EKG. Electro means electricity. Cardio heart, gram, record writing. Record writing. Graphic line, recording that shows the spread of electrical ex excitation to different parts of the heart using small metal electrodes applied to the chest, arms, and legs. Horton monitor test is an electrocardiogram taken, by, taken with a small portable recording system capable of storing up to 24 hours of ECD tracings. Stress test is an ECD taken under controlled exercise stress conditions uh, as for uh, for the diagnosis of uh, angina or myocardial infarction. Cardiac enzyme studies is the blood test that measures troponin T, troponin I, and creatinine kinase for the diagnosis of myocardial infarction. Lipid panel. The lipid panel is a series of uh, tests used to assess risk factors of ischemic heart disease, usually LDL cholesterol, total cholesterol, uh, triglycerides, uh, HDL cholesterol. Arthrography is a radio radiological examination of the aorta. Coronary angiography. This is a radiological examination of the blood vessels and around the heart for the coronary arteries. Echocardiography. This is a non-invasive diagnostic method that uses ultrasound to visualize internal cardiac structures and produce images of the heart, usually Doppler ultrasound. Magnetic resonance imaging, this is a MRI. MLA, magnetic resonance angiography. Phonocardiography, this is an imaging technique that provides a graphic display of heart sounds and murmurs during the cardiac cycle. Phonocardiography, phono means sound. Subtraction angiography, this is an imaging technique used to display soft tissue structures such as blood vessels without the confusing overlay of bone images. Scintigraphy, this is an injection and subsequent detection of radioactive isotopes to create images of body parts and identify body functions and diseases. Venography, this is the radiography of a vein after injection of a contrast medium. So incomplete filling of a vein indicates obstruction. Cardioversion is the process of restoring the normal rhythm of the heart by applying a controlled electrical shock to the exterior of the chest. Embolization is a technique used to block blood flow to a site by passing a catheter to the area and injecting a synthetic material or medication specially, specifically designed to occlude the blood vessel. Angioplasty is a procedure that alters a vessel through surgery or dilation of the vessel using a balloon catheter. There are coronary artery bypass, bypass graft angioplasty and the percutaneous transluminal coronary angioplasty. Uh, I previously mentioned these procedures. Atherectomy is a removal of a material from an occluded vessel using a specially designed catheter fitted with a cutting or grinding device. Biopsy is a removal of a small piece of tissue for diagnosis. Catheter ablation. This is destruction of a conductive tissue of the heart to interrupt abnormal contractions, thus allowing normal heart rhythm to resume. Laser ablation is a procedure used to remove or treat varicose veins by using a later laser. Ligation and stripping. Uh, tying a varicose vein, ligation or ligation, followed by removal, stripping of the affected of the affected segment. Open heart surgery is a surgical procedure performed on and the exposed heart. Pericardiosynthesis 
is puncturing of the pericardium to remove fluid to test for protein, sugar, and enzymes or determine the causative organism of pericarditis. Phlebotomy is incision or puncture of a vein to remove blood or introduce fluids or medications. Thrombolysis is a destruction of a blood clot using anti-clotting agents called clotbusters such as tissue plasminogen activator. Valvotomy is incision of a valve to increase the size of the opening uh, used in treating mitral stenosis. Veiny puncture. This is a puncture of a vein by a needle attached to a syringe or catheter to withdraw a specimen of blood, perform a plebotomy instead of medication, start an intravenous infusion or inject a radioplaque substance for radiological examination. Pharmacology. Angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors, AC inhibitors. This is one of the antihypertensive agents to decrease blood pressure for the treatment of hypertension. There are benazepril, captopril, quinopril. And also, there are antiarrhythmics to help establish a regular heartbeat. Beta block blockers, calcium channel blockers, diuretics, these are all the antihypertensive agents. Statins are used to treat uh, dyslipidemia. Nitrates uh, treat angina pectoris. Peripheral vasodilators increase peripheral blood flow to treat peripheral vascular diseases. And lastly, abbreviations. Triple A, abdominal aortic aneurysm. AF, atrial fibrillation. AS, aortic stenosis. ASD, atrial septal defect. Uh, AST, this is an angiotensin sensitive test, but uh, usually uh, aspartate aminotransferase, one of the liver enzymes. AV, atrial ventricular. BBB, bundle branch block. BP, blood pressure. CABG, CABG, coronary artery bypass graft. CAD, coronary artery disease. CCU, coronary care unit for the uh, severely ill the, uh, cardio, uh, patients uh, of the heart. CHD, coronary heart disease. CK, creatinine kinase. CPR, cardiopulmonary resuscitation. DOE, dyspnea on exertion. DVT, deep vein thrombosis, ECG, EKG. Echo means echocardiogram. HDL, high density lipoprotein. A HF, heart failure. IV means intravenous. Uh, uh, LDL, low density lipoprotein. MI, myocardial infarction. Mm, and PTCA, percutaneous transluminal coronary angioplasty. SA, sinoatrial. VT, ventricular tachycardia. That's it. Okay, now uh, uh, let's see, uh, see you again in the uh, medical terminology 3. Bye.